So I got this package in the mail from my dad. Brown paper wrapping, large but flat, with the word fragile written on it in black ink. When I unwrapped it, it was this big acrylic painting framed in some sort of bronze gilded plaster. The painting itself was of this long hallway full of doors, kind of like you'd see in a fancy hotel. The walls had edging about halfway up. The upper part was painted sort of an off-white, while the lower half was a crimson red that blended into the carpeting. Between each door was an upturned light, as well as on the far wall at the end, where the corridor seemed to connect to another hallway running perpendicular to it, disappearing around a corner. It was really amazing detail, though I wouldn't call it lifelike by any means. Just the sheer amount of intricate pieces to each aspect of the scene showed that the artist really paid attention to every little thing, like somewhere in the world was this hallway, and you could stand at it and hold the painting up in front of you, and if it weren't for the border and the clearly stylized art, you wouldn't be able to tell where the canvas ended and the real world began. I called him up and thanked him immediately. But where'd you find this? I got it at an auction. I kind of figured as much. So I hung up the painting in my office, just behind my desk, which I realized later wasn't the best place for it, because in order to actually look at it, I had to swivel completely around. But there wasn't anywhere better, really, and once I'd gotten it hung up, I felt less willing to take it back down. So I just left it there. It kind of hung out over my shoulder and watched me work. And every now and then, I'd turn around and stare at it, and get entranced by it, feeling like I could get up and put my hands in the frame, and climb out into the painting as if the frame were a window. Of course, I wouldn't be writing this if something weird didn't happen as a result of the painting. We had a couple of friends over, Mark and Sabina. And Mark and I went into the office when the women folks started talking about knitting, which has become my wife's new favorite hobby. I went and sat down at my laptop to find a video I'd been telling Mark about, and Mark wandered over and started admiring the painting. Where did you get that? My dad bought it at an auction and gave it to me. It's, uh, well, it's kind of creepy. It's not that creepy, it's kind of, um, well, I don't know. Hypnotic? Yeah, that would be it. I turned around to look at him while the video loaded. He got up close and was running his finger over the canvas, feeling the raised acrylic. And I just let my gaze wander over the details again. Huh, I didn't notice that before. What? Like at the end of the hallway. There's some sort of light coming from around the corner, and it's casting a shadow on the floor there. I got up and looked closer, because I really hadn't spent a lot of time studying the far end of the hallway. There was definitely some yellow and some darker colors making what looked like the shadow of a person coming from around the corner. I even reached out and touched it just to make sure it wasn't some trick of the light in the study making it just look like there was a shadow in the painting. But I felt the paint, and sure enough, it was actually there in the painting. You see what I mean? Mark said. It's creepy. I genuinely felt weirded out by it. It was one of those moments where you start thinking, why didn't I notice this earlier? Was it there to even notice? Now, a couple of days later, I was working on a project in my study, and it was about 9.30 at night, and I just couldn't focus. So I spun around in my chair to look at the painting, and I felt this sudden vertigo effect. Like the ground wasn't there, and I had to grab my chair and keep from tumbling into emptiness. You wouldn't have noticed it if you hadn't looked at the painting a hundred times like I had. The hallway was long, with exactly six doors. I remember because I counted them the first day. 
three on the left, three on the right, each with a little shiny metal doorknob. Only now, there were seven doors, three on the left, four on the right. It didn't make sense. Everything looked proportionately exactly the same, and the far end of the corridor was just as far away, and yet there was a fourth door in the right side of the hallway, with its little metal doorknob. I don't even know which door was the fourth door. That's how well it blended in. I just know that there were four doors where once there was three. What in the hell is going on? I turned away in my chair and back to check several times to make sure my eyes weren't playing tricks on me, but the number of doors remained constant. So I called my dad again and I asked him, Hey, I'm just curious, but is this a trick painting you sent me? Um, what do you mean? Well, I mean it keeps changing. I can see it changing. Uh, not as far as I know, it was just one in a bunch I picked up at the same auction. Now after I got off the phone, I took the painting down and checked the back for some sort of mechanical or digital hocus pocus. But it was all soft canvas, so I left it on the floor behind my office chair with the painting facing the wall because the thought of it was freaking me out. The next day, I pulled my wife into the office and held the painting up so that she could see it, because she hadn't had a chance to before. How many doors are there? I asked her. She looked it over for a moment. I see seven. Huh. You see, when I first got this, there were six. And she just looked at me like I was being a goofball. <laughs> okay. So which one wasn't there before? I have no idea. You don't know which door magically appeared? <laughs> and she laughed and gave me a kiss and went back into the other room. But it gets worse. The next time I chatted with Mark, I told him about the extra door in the painting. Are you sure there weren't seven doors to begin with? Well, I mean, I could swear I counted six. Well, if another one shows up, at least Melissa counted seven, and you can confirm it then. Hey, you know what you should do? You should take a photo of the painting so you can prove it if anything else changes. What a great idea. So I got off my phone and took a photo of the painting. Two days went by. Nothing changed. On the third day, I walked into my office and there was a man staring at me. Well... I mean, it wasn't. I can't say that it was a man or a woman. Hell, I can't say that it was even human. There was a shape at the end of the hallway in my painting. It was oddly lacking in the detail that the rest of the painting had, like someone had hurriedly painted it on. I even ran my hand over it, just to make sure it wasn't fresh, that someone hadn't actually come in and painted over my painting just to drive me crazy. It was really there, and the look of it scared me more than anything else, changing painting included. Now I wish I could do it justice with words, but the best I can describe it is that it was human-ish, with legs and arms, but it seemed squat or hunched and lopsided like someone had slapped the blurry Quasimodo onto an otherwise beautiful painting. You couldn't see the details of its face, but you could see shading on it, defining really warped features. I was almost glad that there wasn't any more detail to it, except that it left just enough to the imagination to give one nightmares. But I had proof. Here was proof that the painting was changing, so I brought up the file on my laptop to show my wife for comparison. Only when I did, the figure was in the photo I took too. Now at no point did I start questioning my sanity about all of this. Something unnatural and terrifying was going on. So I took the painting out of the house and set it on the curb where we put our trash for pickup. I was done with that painting. 
Or so I thought. The next evening, when I got home from work, it was gone from the curb. I figured someone had seen it and taken it home, and I waved my hands and said, Good, now it's someone else's problem. I went in, played with my daughter, had dinner, put them to bed, and after watching a show with my wife, went into my office to check my email. No, the painting wasn't back on the wall. I made sure of that the moment I walked in the door, but I got a message from Mark asking if the painting had changed any more, and I told him about the creepy new addition and also how I had gotten rid of the painting. Oh man, it sounds cool. I just wish I'd gotten a chance to see it. Well, I could send you the photo I took of it. Yeah, do that. So I opened the image file, and the thing in the painting had raised its arms. Before, you could only make out the arms hanging at its sides, but now both arms were raised up over its head, and its fingers were spread apart like it was waving hello at me. I think it was waving hello at me. I zoomed in as best as I could without pixelating the image, and the shaded contours of the face seemed stretched into a grin. Ah, oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I sent Mark the file, but the connection kept messing up, so I put it in a folder on my Dropbox account and gave him access to it. The file's corrupted, he texted me. I tried to open it as well, but he was right. Every time I copied the image file, somehow it got corrupted. It must just be some spooky magic, Mark joked. This is no joke, Mark. I'm freaking out here. Well, delete the file if it's scaring you so bad. And so I deleted the file. But it gnawed at me, you know? The painting was still changing in horrible, terrifying ways, seemingly acknowledging my observation of it. And now it was gone. But if it was gone, why should it matter? If something unholy happens, it's the problem of whoever has the painting now, right? And they'll see it changing too, won't they? But oh shit. See, it was two days later and I was organizing a folder of documents and had accidentally deleted a couple I hadn't meant to. I went into the Windows recycling bin, and you guessed it. There was the image file along with the documents. And I had to look. I was trembling with dread at the thought of it, but when something so surreal happens to you, you have to witness it, see it through to the end. I recovered the file and opened it up. The walls of the hallway seemed to be melting. The partition separating the red from the off-white was lower than it had been before, and it drooped in places. The ridge on the lights looked like they were peeling off. The carpet seemed less crimson and more reddish-brown, and the figure had taken several steps down the corridor toward the viewer's perspective. More details had become defined, hair hanging off of its head, long and black like it had been painted with a fine-tipped brush. The eyes were little more than dull black points under the shading of the brow, and the grin came with teeth uneven and fat, like those of a child more than of an adult. Its arms were extended out on either side of it, touching both walls. One foot was ahead of the other, as if I had caught it mid-step in a game of red light, green light. I realized I was panting and shaking as I looked at it. It was really hard to breathe, an anxiety attack. The painting was going to make me pass out just from looking at a digital photo of it. So quickly, I closed the image to calm myself down, but that suddenly brought forth the thought, what if it progresses every time I look away? The only way to stop it is to keep looking, and I opened the file again. No change. Oh. No, wait. That wasn't a new change. I had noticed that before, but it hadn't dawned on me. One of the doors was open. 
There was a dim blue light coming from the room inside. Moonlight, I thought. And just outside the threshold of the door, there was an object laying on the ground. I zoomed in for better detail. It was a little yellow stuffed lion with scraggly orange mane. A child's toy. Of all the details, the melting hallway, the grinning fiend with arms wide open, the blue light from the open doorway, it was the innocent nature of that little toy lion that filled me with the most dread. My wife came into the office. Come and kiss Gabby goodnight. I went into her darkened room where she was wrapped up in blankets in her bed, hugging a half dozen stuffed animals and looking cute as could be. My little darling, I love her so much. I kissed my daughter goodnight. She kissed me back and hugged her little pillow pet with the built-in nightlight. It glowed through a variety of colors. I love you, baby, I told her. Can you get my Simba? I looked around. Well, where did you leave it? Over there. She pointed to the closet. The door was open, and her toy lay on the floor just inside. Simba, her little yellow stuffed lion with the scraggly orange mane. Seeing it laying there, just past the threshold of the closet door, while the dim glow of my daughter's nightlight faded from red to purple to blue, I felt my heart rise up in my chest. The closet was just the closet. I could see it was just the closet. There were clothes on hangers and bags with toys and blocks in them. They were right there. And yet, as I looked at the stuffed lion laying on the floor, waiting for me, I felt as if I could see carpeting on the floor inside the closet, even though there was none. Carpeting, not my vision, but in my imagination. And maybe if I went in and shut the door, I'd find that the walls beyond those clothes had a wooden partition, red below, off-white above, and maybe there was something hunched and terrible shambling its way towards us, even as I stood there staring at that toy. I walked briskly, trying not to look half as frightened as I was, snatched up Simba, and shut the closet door. My breathing was heavy like I'd just run a mile, and I struggled to avoid gasping for breath as I tried to calm myself down. Hey, did that poster over there fall down? I asked nobody in particular, then pretended I was trying to adjust the cat poster that had been on the floor by her dresser for months, and shoved the heavy dresser over so that it partially blocked the closet door. Here's Simba, sweetie. I handed the line to Gabby, gave her a quick hug and kiss, and wished her good night before rushing back to my office. The painting had changed, as I knew it would. The open door was closed, the toy gone from the floor, the hallway was dimly lit with yellow light from the melting lights again, but the thing, that not-quite-human fiend, was standing right outside the now-shut door. Its body turned to face it with both hands pressed up against the door itself, like it was running its hands down it, caressing it, and its head turned toward me, still grinning that awful, frightening grin full of gnashed, crooked teeth. Oh god, how close had it been? It's just a closet, I mean, the, the hallway is not there, it's not real. None of this can be real. I've put up signs around the neighborhood, knocked on doors, asked everyone I know, and many I don't, if they knew who took the painting. I need to find it and get it back. I want to tear it, shred it in my hands, throw it in a fire, and watch it burn to ashes. Jeez, God in heaven. I hope it didn't end up in some landfill. I've learned an awful truth. All doors lead to the hallway.